Hello and welcome Mr. Tie-Dye. Lately I've been exploring with the spider web design. I've had lots and lots of questions on it and I decided I want to see if I could do a discharged spider web. But in the way that you fold it up and then remove the color, it it doesn't come out evenly. So I kind of explored with different methods, different numbers of folds on there to see what I could do. And the way that worked the best was doing just the the front of the t-shirt, not the back. And But I think I'm going to try doing one less fold on it also. This one here, I folded it in quarters and then I folded that into thirds there. So if you're just looking at this section here, you see two more folds in there. Well, this next time I'm going to fold just the front and instead of folding two folds, after I fold into a quarter, I'm going to fold just once and see if I can get this to come out better. And then I have one other idea that I haven't tried yet. So I'm going to do a couple different spider web discharges in this video. So to start with, I have a clean black tea. I did a pre-wash on it and then after washing it spins out and it's just barely damp and that's what I have right now and then I've centered it by tucking one sleeve into the other so I have the front uh, and the back of the t-shirt right here I do have a video showing how I do that centering and there will be a link to it in the description box of this video and I think most of my newer videos in the last couple years have a link to how I do the centering so just check that out and then you like say we're gonna start from there, uh, what I'm going to do is just pick this shirt up by the front and fold the back back out of my way there. And then I'm going to smooth this out as much as I can right up to the shoulder seam. So this here is where the sleeve is. That's how far I want to have a nice flat working area here. And then what I'm going to do is pick a spot about in the middle between the top and the bottom here. And that's pretty close. I'll go down a little bit more. I'm just kind of lining it up with the top of the, the neckline there. And then folding this out as flat as I can get it. Let's line that all the way up. And then just making sure that I don't have any other creases in there that are going to get in the way of doing my pleats. Okay, so there is the fold in the quarter. Like I say, last time I did two folds here, meaning I would have folded like that and then over. This time I'm going to do just one big fold all the way over. So here is the center of the T, the middle of the folds. Fold that over just one time. And you can see this the sleeve outline here. This is right here at the shoulder. So that's what I'm going to do is do my pleats on here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of pleat right up the middle there. Um, kind of draw myself a little bit of a line just so that I can pleat about straight up the middle there. You can measure this with the protractor and figure angle or you could also fold one edge over and I can see that yep that crease so I got pretty close on my draw my line there okay so now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to do kind of tall pleats let's see how tall I'm doing mine so I'm doing just over an inch high pleats here and I'm just going to pleat straight up the middle of this line right up to that sleeve there. Okay, I think that will be good. I'm within just a couple inches of this hem of the sleeve here. 
So I got five pleats there. Actually, it'd be one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going to discharge the just the bottom part of this. So the rest of this, I'm going to kind of fold this up out of my way here. So I'm folding that up just so that I can gather this up and tie that off right there. So that's why I folded those two edges in and then it just helps to gather that up. We're gonna I'm just gonna kind of tie this into a, a bit of a wad because I wanna I'm gonna hold this part of the t-shirt and dunk this part of the t-shirt. So it's a little bit of an awkward tie because you're just trying to tie up just that one part of the t-shirt. Just kind of wrap it around the best that you can. And then I'm just going to loosely tie up the rest of this just so that nothing flops over and drops down into the out white bright as I'm doing my soaking. And now this is basically what I'm going to be doing is dunking this bottom part. So that's something you want to kind of get your pleats lined up, the ones that you want to dunk down into the out white bright. So I'm just arranging all of these pleats right there. And then let's see, maybe I'll even use a rubber band just to hold things a little bit. Yeah, because what I want to be able to do is dunk this in. I want to get just the bottom of that to have color removed from it. So we're going to get things set up, get our water boiled, and then I'll be back in about two seconds. Okay, we're back. So I got my tub, and I have it just set on just a little bit of an incline here. I just built this towel up so that all of my stuff will pool down here in this corner. So I'm just putting a little bit of out bright, bright down in the bottom. And then this is what I'm going to do is just kind of dunk that down inside there. And just coat that stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to get my water. Oh, let's get a towel to see it. Okay, I just boiled the water. So now I'm going to set that down in there. And then I'm going to pour my water in. And you want to get just, I already sloshed it up on top there. But you want to just dunk and hold the bottom in and then hold those edges where you kind of pleated up these edges here. You want to get those, some color remove off of those. But basically what I'm going to do is just leave that sit you can see that the color is already coming off at the bottom. So I'm going to leave that sit for just a couple minutes. And then we'll come back and see how we did. Okay. So I think we got about all the color that's coming out of that. So what I'm going to do now is rinse this in the sink. I just use cold water for it. And I can already see that I kind of dunked it too much this time, but you guys get the general idea. The more careful you are with your out white bright, not sloshing it around, then you're going to get a better result on there. Okay. Let's see our results here. And yeah, we got a spider webby presence there. So it's not a perfect one, but still a spider web. That one I, I kind of like. It's still a little bit more, a little thicker than I wanted, but that comes from your pleating. And also how much I dipped it. If I was more careful in my dipping, it might work better, but. 
anyways, there's a basic spider web for anybody who wants to do one. Uh, I'll probably wash this and then with the rest of them I'll probably dye all of them in various colors here. Okay, we're back to put some dye on these t-shirts that I just discharged. Uh, I did two different discharge. This is the first one that I... and you can dye them in any sorts of fashion. I just, as I sat down, I had some ideas come to me for all of the different ones. So we're just going to run through and try them out. I'm going to pick, you know, my own way of folding it, my own colors. You guys can do the same. Uh, what I'm going to do for this one, since this one is just on the, the front only, I'm going to pick this one up and just kind of fold it I can see my marker lines of where it was folded last time down the middle so I'm just folding it along those same lines there and well in fact though I think it'll be easier if I tuck one sleeve in the other <clears throat> just so that the back is lined up because there's a couple spots on the back that didn't that discharged also because I was a little sloppy with my out white bright that's okay. They'll either get dyed or they won't. There'll be a little marker on there to show the the universe took part. Okay. I'm just lining these shoulder seams up in here to get the t-shirt lined up perfectly. I do have a video that shows how I do the centering of the T, the tucking one sleeve into the other. And there's a link to that down in the description box of this video and probably all of my newer videos from the last couple of years has that in there. Okay, so there is my front, back, I'm separating that out a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just fold this back up in the same fashion as before. So there's my center mark. Fold that up. Smooth this out. And then I'm going to fold this edge over to that one. So we're just holding the center of the T. Let's see if I can... There we go. Hold the center and just line those edges up. And then I'm going to pick the t-shirt up, holding here and at the shoulder, and I'm going to flip this part underneath. Well, let's pick it up and straighten. You can straighten those edges a little bit. <coughs> okay. Now this here, I'm folding it up just the same way that it was when I discharged it, although I'm not going to use the same pleats. I'm going to change that up just to kind of vary the pattern a little bit. But also, both of these are ones that you could have just done a really good rinse on them. I usually spin them out, rinse them again, spin them out so they're barely damp, and then you can soak them in soda ash, and you could just go ahead and dye them while they're still tight. You don't need to open them up. But I wanted to see just how my patterning was on there. So that's why I opened mine up. Also to show you guys. And then, like I say, I just want to explore with different methods of folding these back up and dyeing them. So that's all we're doing. We're just experimenting. Okay, and the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of fold that over. And then I'm going to tie this up. Just enough really to hold that in place. And we'll probably tuck those edges in just a little bit again. But really the, the whole thing about using the kite string to tie it up is just to tie it tight enough so that you can pick it up and move it around without it coming unfolded. So that's, that's the main goal that I am observing when I'm tying with kite string is just get it tight enough. For me to move it around whatever I'm going to do with it and tying these back just 
get them out of my way. I'm going to get some gloves on and we'll get come back and we'll get some color put on that. So stay tuned. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dye the whole top side with orange and I'm going to dye the bottom side with black. What I'm trying to do, I know that I have some wide lines on here and I'm just trying to take up some of that extra space and see if maybe the black will kind of lend more into the spider web look. But these are all experiments so we're just going to play with it and see what happens. So there's one spider web. We're going to see what happens. Morning and welcome to Hippie Christmas with Mr. Tie-Dye. So these are going to be a bunch of spider web discharge t-shirts that I made up as I explored with this design. Uh, by now you probably have already seen the spider web tapestry. That one I did with just plain liquid dyes, but this one, all of these t-shirts were done discharged and then I re-dyed them in various manners. Just have a little fun. Another spider web tee. This one's just on the front. You'll see the results in about two seconds. Okay, I said I had another method that I hadn't tried yet, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm still working with a uh, clean, damp black t shirt that's 100% cotton. Uh, I use the Port and Company brand. Uh, or the Gildan Ultra, but lately the Port and Company is what I've been finding, so that's what I've been using for my discharge dies. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it just straight in half. Uh, I'm going to be tying this up with sinew and discharging the whole thing, so I'm not worried about the side-to-side -side stuff. So this one here, I think it's just going to be easier to fold it straight in half. And like I say, this here is an experiment, so we'll see how it works when it comes out. But, and then I'm going to do the same fold, so that's in half, that's in quarters, and now what I'm going to do is fold straight up across here, so from the center of the T up to the shoulder, but also to the edges of the T there that are folded up, I'm just doing little pleats. So now what I'm going to do is tie sinew right along that pleat line. So right from the center of the T up to the shoulder the part that I folded over there. Okay, and now I'm going to tie up at an angle off to the side and back down to the middle here. So you can see I'm kind of going up to the edge. So the next one I'm going to do is probably right just to the right of the neckline there. So I'll go from the center and tie up there. So you just want to get a nice angle on there and sometimes it helps to get a couple wraps in there. And I just flip it back and forth as I'm wrapping to make sure that I'm getting it in the same spot and then once I have it there a few wraps, yeah I think I have two, this is my third wrap around there then I'm going to use my hand to hold it down just so that this doesn't buckle up and then I'm going to just slowly pull the tension out of there I can see that my line is moving over from the center so that's not optimum if you could keep that right in the middle I think the design would come out better so now I wrapped it back around 
the middle here and I'm coming up underneath and let's see yeah I'm gonna come right to that line right there and these are just uh, like I say an idea that came to me and I like to just try things out so I'm going to tie that up at an angle and I'm going to come right back down to the middle here. Okay, so I tied that with sinew and now I want to tie the rest of it up tightly with kite string because I still want to kind of try to block some of these inner folds here but I don't want to have lines on there per se the same way so like I say this is all just experimental I'm just trying to block some more of the dye from or yeah more of the dye black dye from coming out so I'm just going to kind of wrap around this whole shirt and just kind of pull it a little bit tight and stay in with my pleats here So with the kite string, I'm tying it tightly, but I'm not pulling it like I do with the sinew because you'll break it then. So I just kind of put a nice snugness of kite string on there to really tighten it up. And then I'm going to put it now right bright and I'm going to fill it all the way up and then flip it back and forth and see what kind of color comes out. Alright. Well, let me get set up. Okay. So we have the tee all nice and tied up here and what I'm going to use is the Out White Bright. This here is uh, just a cleaning product. It's found in the bleach aisle but it comes in powdered form. Um, I use it either outside or I have an open window here. Uh, you want good ventilation because you don't want to be breathing this dust. If I wasn't doing a video, I'd probably put a mask on just to help cut down on the breathing of the dust. You don't want to do that. Also, I'm going to pour boiling water, which is going to cause steam and stuff to come up. You want to make sure you're not breathing that or getting that in your face. So I always have it kind of sitting off to the side, and <clears throat> then I can avoid the steam and stuff in my eyes. So I just give this a good coat. Put some down underneath because I'm going to put a lot of water on this just to kind of fill this up and soak it down in there completely. Like I say, I'm using freshly boiled water. As soon as you start pouring it on, the color starts coming out. And tongs is a nice thing to have handy. I just found these in the kitchen section. But to be able to pick that up and flip it around. I know my early videos I didn't have tongs and I was trying to do the other things. Anyways, tongs definitely help. I can still see some black on top here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more out white bright. And then we're going to just let this thing soak for a while. Okay, so now I'm just going to let that soak probably 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll come back to it. I'll flip it over a couple times while I'm doing that and then we'll open it up and see what we got. So stay tuned. Peace. Okay, welcome back to the experimental spire web. So this one here has been soaking. I probably left it oh, a good 20-25 minutes. So I'm going to now rinse it out here in the sink 
I usually do a good rinse. If I'm going to add dye right back into it, then I usually will give it a good rinse in the sink, soak it for a while. I spin it out in the washer machine, soak it some more, spin it out again, and then you can soak it and add dye to it. But this one here, I'm going to open it up, so I don't need to do as good of a rinse job on it right now. I'm just trying to get some of the main stuff out. I make sure that it's cooled down, because you did have boiling water on that. You don't want to pick this thing up while it's still hot and start handling it. So I always make sure to rinse it with cold water at the beginning. <clears throat> All right. So now let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we have. I'm going to go into hyperspeed here. Okay, so I'm getting some nice spider web with some lines here, although the lines are kind of close together. But let's see what we get when we open it all the way up. Yeah, it's a little bit spider webby, not not exactly, but it gives you a, kind of a general idea. So those are a couple experiments from Mr. Tie Dye. So I'll get this washed, and then we'll probably dye some of these up. So stay tuned. Okay, the next one is the one that I tied up and tied it tightly with sinew, and then discharged the whole thing, the whole T-shirt. So. This one here, I think I'm just going to do a, a spiral twist on it and dye it up that way, just in a couple colors. So there's the next one. Let's get some gloves on, come back, get some more color put on this thing. Okay, we're ready to put some color on this one. I think I'm going to dye the whole side solid one color and dye the other side another color. I'm going with black again on this other side just to see what I can make happen. Another one. We're going to let it batch for 48 hours and you'll see the results here in about two seconds. Alright, here we are with the next spider web. So I probably covered up some of the effect of the web in this dyeing process, putting the black on, but it's always fun to explore and see what you get. So I'll have that washed out, fully opened. You guys will see the results in about two seconds. Okay, I decided to go ahead and dye the other three t-shirts that I had experimented on. I didn't do a, a video of the discharge, but I can at least, I refolded it to show how it was folded up. So this was another one that I folded up and bunched this part up and dipped just part of it in. And I didn't get it exactly folded, but you can see that this here has black on the bottom. So I, I dunked it in to discharge that side. I dunked it in to discharge this whole edge. That's why you can see this line right here. And then I did the same thing over here, although I didn't get it folded exactly right now. But that's basically how that one was done. So you can see that. But in the dunking it, the lines got really wide. So it only left just these little bits of black in there just because of how thick the folds are from doing the front and the back of the t-shirt together so it's not bad it's just that's just how it came out so this one was folded in quarters and then over once so this one here is folded under and then this is folded under so that's how that one was folded up and like I say it gave me these big fat lines on here so what I decided since I have a lot of white space in here to work with and since this is supposed to be a spider web I'm going to do a spider tie on this one here 
So right now I still have it with the one sleeve tucked in, uh, what I call centering a t-shirt, and I do have a video uh, link below that shows how I do the tucking of the sleeve. Anyways, so I'm just going to quickly tie this up in a spider design and we'll get it dyed in a couple colors. So I go across from there, twist going down. Like I say, we're going to do a spider design on that one. So, let me get some gloves on. We'll be back in about two seconds. Thank you. Okay, for my next one, I'm going to go with orange. And actually, it's a orange mixture there. I was running low on orange and yellow both. So, I just kind of poured them together to give me enough to dye one more t-shirt. Oh, and I added a small squirt of fuchsia in there too just because anyways and then the other color I'm going to use is bright green and this is the one that we tied up like the spider so we're going to dye it in orange and green I'm going to let this batch for 48 hours and then we'll get it washed and you'll see the results in about two seconds one just turned out fantastic. I love the, the green and orange spider there. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like all the way washed out. Let's see. It's an extra large. I might have to keep this one. We'll see. Anyways, you'll see the results here in about two seconds. Peace. Okay, back with another one of the other tees that I did. This one I folded up more times, and this time I also folded up the whole tee and mashed it all together. I discharged just from one top. It's an extra thick, probably two inches. Yeah, I don't have my thing here, but probably two inches here. So it just gave me a much taller pleat, and then you can see the bottom part is where I didn't discharge so I just put it down in the bucket and discharged it that way so but there was one extra fold in there so there's one fold over and fold under so one of them I folded just straight like that and this one I folded well I folded this under one so like that and this one over so just one extra fold in there giving more layers to this one so just depending on how many times you fold it up this way is how thick this is going to be meaning bigger thicker ones so fewer folds doing like the the quarter fold where i just folded it one time that gave me less thickness making these thinner so you can explore and experiment but I just want to kind of show a couple different ones to see what you get from that and then let's see I think I'm gonna spiral this one also since I have a lot of white space down there there's another one we're going to get some gloves on and we'll put some color on that, so stay tuned. Okay, I decided to play with one more with just a, just a plain spiral design on it. So I'm going to use a blue mix. This is another one that I had a couple blues. Bluebird and I think there were some turquoise and a sapphire blue or something. I don't know. There was other blues in there. I poured them all together. I do that sometimes when I'm getting down to the end of my dyes before I mix more. I'm going to use an emerald green, I'm going to use fuchsia, and I'm going to use a watered down purple. It was plum with a little bit of deep purple in there and then I watered it down to make it lighter. I'm going to dye the top side blue and the bottom side green and then the other side over here I'm going to dye in purple and then the bottom side fuchsia or maybe I'll do the fuchsia on top there's a 
another one done. So I'm going to let this sit for 48 hours to batch and then I'll have it washed and out for you guys to see about two seconds. Peace. Alright. This was the four color spiral. Fun when it's washed out. Alright, peace. Okay, here's uh, the last one. This one is just on the front and it was uh, discharged in a similar fashion to the other one where I tied up just the front and then used the whole back to kind of dunk it. Only this one here I folded it one extra time. So you can kind of see these lines when you fold it in the quarters. Then I did two more fold lines here. So that one like that and that one like that. And that was how this one was folded up where the one I did on this video I did just like this, this much. So anyways, we have a nice bit of circular design there on the front. So let's uh, maybe maybe I want to do a, like a star flower design. Let's see what we can do here. one more time. Now I do have a couple different videos for the star flower so if you want more direction or whatever in how to fold the star flower um, I'll try to remember to put a link to the star flower one but you could just look up star flower on my channel there's a couple different videos for it. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, so that's what we're going to do here is the star flower. Once I have it all folded up this way, then we're going to twist it. And I'm just kind of rolling that up and trying to keep this all flat as I go. So just rolling it up from the center. Let's see if you can see that that way. Yeah. Since this is just on the front only, I don't need to incorporate the back into it, so we'll just wad it up and tie it in place. And then I'm just going to tie this up a little bit just to kind of keep it contained so it's not flopping around on me as I pick things up and move it around. Alright, there is the star flower on the spider web design. So let's get some gloves on, come back and put some color in this thing. Okay, time to dye this thing. I marked it off into four quadrants. I'm going to use a bright blue, a, a bright green, a blue mix here, fuchsia, and then a light, turk, or light purple that I mixed up. Okay, with the star flower design, there's many more layers in there that the dye needs to penetrate through. So what I usually use as my guide is I flip it over and I look for color coming through in different sections. And I can see a little bit of fuchsia just on the edge, but I want to see the fuchsia down in here. Same with the rest of the colors. So I'm going to let this sit for a bit for the colors to soak in more, and then I'm going to apply another coat to the top and I'm going to keep checking the bottom until I see it should almost look like it's dyed on the bottom and at that point then I'll flip it over and add 
one coat of color but until we get to that point I'm gonna let this sit and I also like to put it onto a rag since the t-shirt is barely damp with soda ash right now um, there is liquid in there and what I want is this liquid I just put on to soak in further but the shirt can only hold so much liquid so with this being dry the liquid the soda ash excess soda ash is going to be pulled down into the rag and allow these colors to soak in further so it's almost pulling the dye through so that's one of my main reasons for putting the towel down is just to help with the saturation and then also to catch any extra little drips of dye that you might have dropped so I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll add another coat of color to this okay it's been about uh, five or six minutes so I'm gonna add another coat all the way around Okay, so the purple is looking better. I mean, there's some black here, so it's hard to tell, but I can see purple all the way up in there. And the blue is getting to be the same way. I can see green most of the way through some of these. I'll probably add one more coat because I'd like to see some deeper in there. And the fuchsia, definitely, I want to see more fuchsia in here before I flip it over. So I like how the green, the purple, and the blue all look. I'll add one more coat, I think, of fuchsia, and then I'll let it sit for a bit and then flip it over. And this kind of checking for that dye to come through. Anytime I work anything with that is many layers thick and you're dyeing the same colors on the top and the bottom, it's good to dye it from just one side only until the colors are really showing through nicely down here so that's just my preference and the other thing sometimes applying a little bit of pressure will help the dye soak in more so you can just kind of push on that section and as you push that moves that liquid around inside so, and since I'm pushing onto the rag, the rag is also helping pull the liquid through. The liquid really wants to just equalize within the, the dry fabric. So having the clean dry towel or rag or something underneath, it's just adding to that movement of the liquid through the fabric. Okay. Through the black, I can kind of see just a little bit of the fuchsia right there. So I think I'm going to be good. I got fuchsia all the way up there. I'm going to think just dye the bottom side of this and then call this good. So let's get rid of that. Put a clean one down. And then I'm going to finish dyeing this. So. I think we're going to call that good. I'm going to set this aside, let it batch for 48 hours, and you guys, of course, will see the results in about two seconds. Peace, love, light, and laughter. Thanks for watching. Okay, and now for the last one, at least in this series. All right, and there is the final spider web with the star flower design done on it. That one I think is looking pretty awesome too. We'll get all of these washed up. You'll see the results here in about two seconds. Thank you for watching.